In the UK, over 6 million of us are using Wi-Fi tech that's not designed to connect multiple bandwidth-hungry users at the same time. But the three Wi-Fi mesh networks on test today all claim to be able to keep a whole household connected without breaking a sweat. But I want to test them to their limits, so I've come here. This is Icon House, a real challenge for Wi-Fi networks. It's not only huge, it's also home to nine internet-hungry social influencers. Hello! Hey, John. Gosh, you're all here. Hello. Brilliant. Hey, hey, hey. Take me to your router. Let's go. <laughs> The first mesh network hoping to hook up our influencers is the TP-Link Deco S4. It's the cheapest on test and the only one that doesn't come with the latest Wi-Fi 6 tech. Next is the mid-priced Amazon Eero 6, which does use the latest Wi-Fi 6 technology and supports Alexa voice control. And finally, I've got Netgear's Wi-Fi 6 Orbi. It may be the most expensive on test, but it boasts the fastest Wi-Fi speeds. So, how will these specs translate into real-world performance? And what exactly is a Wi-Fi mesh network? When using traditional Wi-Fi, the further you are away from your router, where the internet comes into your home, the weaker the signal gets and the slower the speed, especially if there are walls in the way. Now, mesh networks counter this problem by installing a base unit next to your router and a series of extender pods round your home. These not only communicate with the router, they also communicate with each other. So your wireless connection can take the path of least resistance wherever you are. With the science bit over, it's time to get testing. First, download speeds. Now, Mari here is going to help me test my three mesh networks by comparing the internet speeds we can get in her room way upstairs. At Influencer HQ, the maximum download speed when plugged into the router is around 40 megabits per second. How much will this speed degrade when shared wirelessly on the three mesh Wi-Fi networks? First up, the TP-Link. Mari! Mari! I think this could be a long day. The TP-Link uses older Wi-Fi 5 tech. They say the pods can be up to 50 feet apart. Well, this is good. It's the middle of the middle floor, so uh, perhaps over in that corner. Meaning we can easily get a signal to the far extremities of the house. But how fast will the internet speeds be? So, we've got 39.9 download. A great result with virtually no loss of speed compared to the reading downstairs. Will the mid-priced Wi-Fi 6-enabled Eero perform just as well? 39.3 download speed. It is slightly slower than the uh, TP-Link, but I don't think it's significantly so. I think that's well within the tolerance of uh, network fluctuation. Two impressive results so far, then. Can the top-priced Orbi also achieve top marks? Let's go. And it's 39.7 for the Netgear Orbi, which uh, puts us in the middle of the of the three. Yes! While the TP-Link marginally shaded my speed test, all three meshes performed so incredibly well, I'm calling this round a rather remarkable draw. On to test two, multiple users. Heavy traffic on a network at the same time can result in poor quality Wi-Fi, and you could be faced with buffering videos, stuttering Zoom meetings, or jittery online gaming. So, to find out which mesh network can best handle the demands of the influencers, I'm going to put them and the mesh networks to work. Stand by for some network stress. Influencers! Influence! With all nine influencers set to work around the house at the same time, their devices will increase demand on the network. Jolly good. I doubt I'll influence anybody with dancing like that, but there seems to be plenty of online activity going on. So, back to work I go. I'm going to use an app called Sam Knows, which measures network performance to compare the latency of each of the three mesh networks. Latency is the time it takes for data to travel from one place to another over a network. Lower latency means a faster response when you click on a web link, for example, and a more seamless browsing experience overall. Start testing, which is at the bottom. TP-Link's Deco claims to provide a stable and lag-free connection for up to 100 connected devices, even with lots of internet traffic. And the results on latency, 28.2 milliseconds from the TP-Link. Let's move on to the mid-priced Eero, which claims to support up to 75 devices. 
30.8 milliseconds, so the TP-Link is in the lead. So, the cheapest is best so far. Can the Netgear Orbi, which claims to support four times the traffic of older Wi-Fi 5 systems, perform any better? And latency for the Netgear, 36.9 milliseconds. So, when it comes to multiple users, the most expensive mesh comes in last place, with the cheapest from TP-Link coming first, giving it the overall lead going into round three, the all-important range test. For this test, Brooke and Shannon are going to be streaming a live video, which I'm going to watch on my phone using Wi-Fi as I wander around the house. The winning mesh network is going to be the one that sustains the signal best. What are we going to be streaming? So we're doing a hair and makeup tutorial. Let's get started. I'll wander off. My three-pod TP-Link network should cover an area of 4,000 square feet. Seems to be maintaining. But if you have a larger area to cover or have lots of thick walls, you can add more pods. So I just like it makes my hair look thicker, though. Yeah, that's the same thing. Up on the first floor, the TP Link continues to perform well until I head to the Isle Suite down the corridor and I encounter my first bit of buffering. I've had a slight buffer, a slight pixelation. And as I climb upstairs to the top floor of the house, the problems get worse. Oh, no, it's breaking up a bit in the shower. But back downstairs in the conservatory, where the influencers also suffer with poor connectivity, it's better news. No dropouts, no stuttering. Let's try the guard. Definite freeze here. We're obviously a fair distance from the house. A good performance from the TP-Link, then. Next up, it's the Eero. The Eero uses a quad-core processor and dedicated algorithms to hop between pods. However, there's already a problem in the downstairs hallway. It's frozen a little bit down here in the hall. It's got back online again. How about in the upstairs bathroom where the TP-Link struggled? That is very smooth. And in the upstairs shower room? It's maintaining good picture quality. But as soon as I stepped outside, let's go... Oh, no, we're frozen. Barely two feet out of the house. Onto the final mesh network, the Orbi. Unlike with the Eero, I had no issues in the hallway. But soon after heading upstairs to the first floor corridor, the problem started. And there's quite a bit of a stutter going on now. We're frozen. Hello. And it's a similar story in the bathrooms. It's looking a bit pixelated in here. Ooh. Pixelated, but not freezing. How about in the garden? Oh, we're frozen already. It's uh, only a few feet out of the conservatory, and I've lost signal. So, another disappointing performance from the top-priced Orbi. And while the Eero impressed, it's the TP-Link once again that wins, giving it top marks overall, despite its budget-friendly price tag.